How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at The Forged, issue number one, or as the the top there puts it, issue number 001. Guess they think they're going to get to 100 issues. Um, the Forged is a new science fiction book from Image. Uh, it's printed, as you can see, in this larger magazine size, so it's bigger than your average comic book, and is also uh, a little thicker, too, so if you guys like good big reads, you know, you, you might be interested in that. Um, the gist of this story is that there's one of the Empress's ships that went down, and they're sending another ship to go examine the wreckage, uh, but of course there's a conspiracy sort of element behind it. Uh, what's really going on here? The team that is going to be taking a look at the wreckage is called The Forged, and they get their name because they've been sort of genetically engineered, you know, artificially created to be the best warriors. So it's this team of... Uh, female warriors that are going to go down in these giant mech suits and try to figure out what happened to the last team. And overall, I think there will be an audience for this book. Uh, it, it's it's very tropey sci-fi, and I know that there is a bunch of people who absolutely love is some very tropey sci-fi, and, and if that's your thing... You, you would probably like this, so I don't want to bash on it too hard because I, I know that there probably is an audience for this and, and why I personally didn't get into it, I could totally see a lot of other people going head over heels for this one. Personally, it, it, it didn't get me, and there's a few reasons for that. One, this is bigger and oversized, but at the end of the issue, we're still where we would be if it was just a regular size comic. Like, they had all this extra time, they had all this extra space, and they didn't really do anything important with it. We, th There's actually very little action in this book. You know, you get some training montages, or, well, not really montage, just a few sequences, and it's, you know, not, not too action-heavy. It's just going around the ship and, you know, different politics and world building and discussing of things. And it just goes so, so shockingly slow, you know, especially with this premise of, you know, a team of cool female action heroes. You know, they don't really get to do much of anything until the end. And the dialogue is so much techno jargon. And... I do want to say, you know, like, if you're watching a movie, you can kind of tune that stuff out. It's usually lower in the audio mix, and and you know, like, it, it's just techno jargon. But here, so many of the speech bubbles are like, we're adjusting our altitude by .28 or something like that, and, oh, this planet, we have this, and the schematics here are this. And it's just, like, I swear, it felt like half the speech bubbles were made up techno jargon with with no in no relevance to the plot and then you get a bunch of uh, campy cheesy lines especially when you know like one of the women is talking about men and you get these like cheesy sex jokes and overall it, it just it, it goes slow it wastes time and it's so very very technical this is one of those books that focuses more on world building than characters and plot. And we get all this stuff about, you know, there's the Empress and then there's, you know, these genetically made people. But there's also people called Cassandras, which have telepathic powers. And then there's all this military protocol. And it honestly gets so very bogged down by things that don't matter. I find with the story, the most important things are characters and, 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 and an interesting plot. And here it's world building and there's so many scenes that are uncrucial. And, 
you know, the main character seems okay, but you don't really get to know her. Other than that, she's the uh, tough, strong leader of this group, and, you know, I don't know really what she likes or, or dislikes, and then all her friends are, you know, one of those, you know, group of wacky characters where they all have a gimmick, and, y yeah, it, there's a difference between a gimmick and a personality, you know, so, overall, it, I wasn't really hooked on this book, but then again, there's a ton of sci-fi shows that people are all the rage over and I just don't get as well. So if you're into, you know, this kind of hardcore, super technical, slow-moving sci-fi, I think this book does have an audience, but boy, did it, did it not hook me. So, you know, if that sounds like something you'd like, you know, that that's fine, and I'm sure you'll like that there's a a big, thick book out that fits within this theme. It's just, when we got to where we, we ended this issue, I felt that that's where we would have ended issue one of a regular small 22-page comic, and that all these extra pages and panels were just filler, you know, and, and I really, I, I don't like filler, I don't like wasted time, it, I, I don't know, so overall, it, it didn't really hit right with me, it might with you, and, and I don't want to just completely trash it, because, yeah, it, it might, uh, but anyway, if you guys want to see a little more of this comic, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera, I'll show you guys a little bit of the story, I'll show you guys a little bit of the art, I'll try to elaborate on what I said here with examples in the text, but uh, I won't be doing any major spoilers, I won't go near the ending, but if you want to see a little bit more about this book, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at The Forged, and I guess first off I should mention that yes, this is the bigger magazine size. I happen to have a random alien comic off to the side here, and we can see that the magazine size comic is a little bigger in dimensions, a little taller and especially a fair bit wider than the mag uh, than the standard comic size. So it is it is bigger and it does have more pages to it. Let's bring it closer to the camera. We see the logo. Uh, we see that it is five ninety nine, which is more than a standard comic. But like I said, it is bigger, and $5.99 is a pretty standard magazine size price. Image, comics, and then we get this uh, little little bubble here. A team of ultra-lethal Imperial Vixens, a cabal of sinuous space witches. We only see one of the witches in here. And then a bug stomp on a distant hell world. Which I think that's more issue two. Again, issue two hasn't come out. But like I said, issue one is very light on the action. We get these red things from the cover, which I'm guessing are the bugs referred to in the bug stomp. But they show up ever so briefly. So, yeah. <laughs> if you want action, hopefully we'll get that in issue two. But that being said, this cover is pretty cool. You get her in her robot, and I guess the front's broken open, so she's reaching out and grabbing at these tentacles. And you see, like, that one over there has a face. You look closely here, you can see the eye. I mean, it's a cool cover, and I do wish this book was more action-heavy. But like I said, issue one is so, so slow. If we open it up, we get the credits. We get created by Greg Ruka and Eric Tartman, they did the story, and then Mike Henderson did the art. There's the extended credits, the logo, and a happy birthday to someone named Allison Poppy below the big technical, or above the big technical credits. And we do actually get some bonus features in this book. There's the beginning of what will be a letters page, but we get after the story wraps up, this whole double page thing with uh, their creed there and then after that we get like a guide to planets and then after that we get 
a whole sort of technical glossary about the worlds and stuff. So, yeah, this is one of those in-depth sci-fis where they need a glossary. I mean, cool to get bonus features, but that should let you know what kind of headspace you need to be in for this book. And I guess without further ado, let's open it up to the story proper. Again, I won't be doing any major spoilers, and I won't show you guys everything. Just a little bit to know, you know, the story and the art, and, you know, I do want to say my piece and analyze a few things. So let's take a look at some of the plot points. And I have to say, right off the bat, you know what kind of book you're getting in. We get... 22nd day, 9 month, Ring of the Empress Eternal, year 13,817, Imperial Calendar. Yeah, this whole page is pretty much just technical jargon, you know. Uh, you led transmission to ICR Halo-14, encryption level Empress 4-1. Yeah, this whole page is basically just techno babble, and there's a little spaceship on the bottom. There's so many of these boxes that are just useless ship stats, and I hate it. Uh, one of the few interesting ones, you get another double page splash there with it going through hyperspace or whatever. Uh, but this is one of the few that actually matters. Passengers 1, classified, crew 91,000, and then special cargo, the forge team. Okay, that was actually interesting, but most of these are just babble, and oh my gosh. But we get to see the Forge team, they're playing cards, that's their leader, and you get to see there's uh, five of them. Uh, this one over here, I, I really like, she has a robot, and I guess she can't talk, and the robot reads her brain and says what she wants to say for her, and she's like their sharpshooter. Now, uh, you also get this girl over here. She's the big one, and she says, Please tell me I get to murder something soon. Yeah, I... I when X-Men did Beast, and they were like, Hey, he's a big guy, but he's not really mean and violent. He actually wants to to be in his library and read books. I thought that was a clever reinvention of the trope, and that happened decades ago, but we still get this trope of, I'm the big one, so I must want to smash things. And it's not great. We get a little peek at their robots up here in the corner, uh, but we won't get to see too much of them for a while. And we get um, their mission. She tells them the mission and about how a ship crashed and they're going to go and check it out. And they're like, ah, uh, they're sending a forge team. They're sending us just to go check out a shipwreck. What's the deal with that? And then we get a bit where it's the captain and the second in command. And he's going to go see the Cassandra. And you get a bit with this captain and the second in command. And let me tell you, by the end of this, it seems like they're not going to play hardly any role in the story, which makes me wonder why they were set up so much here. Uh, but we eventually get the Cassandra, and she is a magic girl with te uh, telepathic powers, dressed very much like something you'd see in Heavy Middle Magazine. And he's standoffish, so she decides to p uh, telepathically emit a euphoric message, which I can't show you because it is uh, sexual in nature, and of course she does this without his consent, but that's not really brought up, and um, yeah, this scene doesn't serve much point other than that she's going to want him to ignore a protocol later, and for real, it goes on like at least six pages, uh, but anyway, we do get another scene where they're training because they have to be at the ready and then these two people see them training and they're like what are they doing training here this isn't their proper training hours and of course she has to go well we have permission to train here from the empress herself because we're the forge team and we need to be ready and he's like the, the Forge team? What? Really? And then we get a bunch of panels of Techno Babble again. Caprice code FS 
three alpha ready one if you wish to check our authorization oh my gosh so much techno babble but anyway yeah that scene was yeah okay they're training and then this guy comes in and then she leaves to go see the cassandra as well this whole scene i mean okay it introduced kind of a, a mystique around the forge team but it didn't really need to be there she could be doing anything when she got called away and that could take up less pages as well but of course, the uh, Cassandra wants to to see her, and uh, she says she knows her because they came from the same batch. Do you see the Forged are genetically engineered, hence the name Forged, and so are apparently the Cassandras, but uh, she became the magical one, and the main character went off into battle, and in turn, they share the same birthday, and... She says she kind of remembers the main character. Um, after that, she tries to resist the mind control powers, and she sweeps in with a kiss in order to touch her. And she's going to kind of space out, and then, and then later she's going to wake up and not remember that. And we find out later that she was giving her special instructions and she didn't remember it because she only is going to remember when they come into play. But, I mean, man, from that setup, it really looks like a scene of sexual assault. And then she doesn't remember what's going on. That's not what happens, but boy, does it, it put you off for a second. Uh, but anyway, you know, it seems like I'm talking about a lot. Again, I, I'm not covering much of the book, you know. Uh, there's the staple, which would put us at about halfway, and we're just now getting to the planet. But of course, there's going to be a long scenes about protocol and suiting up, and it's not going to be getting into any sort of anything like action till the end of the book. You know, so man, this is issue one. It's supposed to be exciting. It's supposed to hook you. But like I said, so many of these scenes aren't super important. What happens at the end of the book, you realize a lot of these characters probably aren't going to be super important later in the story. And you really wonder why we spent so much time with them. And you, you think they would find a way to work in an action sequence at the beginning or something, but... But but no, there, there's hardly any action in this book. We get to the same place we would get to in a regular 22-page comic, but it takes us way longer to get here because it's in this oversized magazine format. And like I said, man, I am dying from that techno babble and all these ship uh, this coordinates and we're implementing this protocol. And I'm like, again, if this were a movie, I could tune that out. But because I'm reading through this and everything has the exact same weight on paper, I, I can't really tune it out or skip over it because there is some stuff that's important. And in turn, you're reading this technical jargon for a world that doesn't really exist. And it takes up such a high percentage of the book's dialogue. But anyway, that being said, I know some people like really technical, detailed, and slow-moving sci-fi and this book probably will have an audience. Will it be a big enough audience to keep it going for the 100 plus issues that it wants to? I don't know, maybe. I mean, there are some good ideas. It was just, I don't know, really not my not my cup of tea, you know. But hey, eventually, sounds like issue two. Hopefully we'll get some robot action. And, and this might be a book that really picks up in the second issue because it did leave us on a place that would imply more action coming in the future, but boy, was this a slow start to it. So, I don't know. If you guys like it, like I said, it may have an audience, and if you like it, you, you can let me know. But yeah, this just wasn't for me. Uh, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist at the bottom, and uh, how about... I'll put my number ones playlist there. This will be all the, the issue number ones that I check out. Um, I, I cover issue ones a, a fair bit. I'm not trying to just jump on the bandwagon of, oh, try to get the views by covering issue ones, but it's really more, you know, stuff that I chose to check out and I thought, hey, why not share it with you? 
and you know trying to explore and find new series and they they don't always pan out but you know if you want to see me talk about more shoe ones you can find those at the bottom anyway have a good day i'll see you guys again very very soon relevant playlist at the bottom have a good day now